This is the kind of video that everybody loves to see. And it's the kind of video that you're going to hear about for a while. Like, you're going to see many people on TV, on radio, on YouTube talk about this entire angle over here. I know Clay made a video about this same topic like an hour or two ago. So big shout out to Clay for going out there and talking about the same topic. However, I have not actually seen the video, mostly because I want to go into this video with a fresh, clear palette on my mind that really allows me to talk about things in the ways that I want to. So I don't want anyone in the comments going out there saying, oh, Lego, you're copying anybody for making this video. No. Oh, this is just the hottest topic in Vancouver Canucks Nation right now, and I'm going to say that over the KHL free agent the Canucks want to sign, over the Niels Hoaglander trade rumors, even over the Bo Horvat stuff that I was talking about yesterday, and the game itself. So, just to get that out of the way, I did not watch yesterday's game 5-2 to two over the Seattle Kraken. It was a 2-1 to one Kraken lead after the first period, but the Vancouver Canucks tightened it down afterwards. It was a pretty good game based off of everything that I had seen on Twitter, people talking about the game and highlighting, you know, what stood out to them, etc. But of course, I did not see it myself. However, what I have been noticing out of the Vancouver Canucks as of late, especially out of the supposed to be, and I'm going to say supposed to be because he's supposed to be the best player on the team, EP40 Elias Pettersson, because when it comes to the way he has played this season... It's kind of a tale of two very, very different stories. At the beginning of the season, the first 25 games on the year, I believe he was shooting at like a 5-6% shooting percentage, and he had X amount of goals. It was a very small amount of goals. He wasn't really getting any points. He was falling down. Every time he touched the puck in the corner, he was almost light as a feather when anybody would go out there and give him trouble along the perimeter. He would just not be there. And a lot of people were very quick to go out there and give Petey the label of being somewhat worse than we thought he was going to be. And you know, to be fair, $7 million player, at least that's what he is right now, supposed to be a franchise caliber forward for this team, those kinds of factors have a lot of weight to them. And so the reaction from the Vancouver Canucks fan base was extraordinary. I also said this in yesterday's video highlighting Bo Horvat when I kind of critiqued Bo Horvat in the way that he's been playing as of late too, but Petey has so many things that make him such a prime target of conversation and criticism when he is not doing well because this is the type of player that is not supposed to be not doing well. These are the guys at the top of your team, the guys who are supposed to go out there and carry the charge, carry the torch, I should say, and be difference makers every night. Petey, for the first half of the season, just wasn't that in the same capacity. There would be flashes sometimes, there would be good snipes once in a while, but the Pedersen we had seen, just for example in his rookie season, was a completely different Pedersen than the Pedersen we saw for the first 25 games under Travis Green. Now under Bruce Boudreaux, he is shooting at a lot better of a shooting percentage. I think it's at like 18, 19, 20 percent, something like that. And he has started to actually pot the puck in a lot more because of it. And in fact, if you take a look at Pedersen and the holistic way he plays the game, not just shooting and scoring, not just in one aspect of offense, but everywhere else. Elias Pedersen is a completely different player. And who knows if this is just strictly the Bruce Boudreaux effect, where Boudreaux is playing a style that allows Pedersen to go out there and flourish the way that we know he can, but there are a few other things that I wanted to highlight when it comes to Pedersen and how he has been playing this season, because it's just kind of extraordinary seeing everything go down. Pedersen said yesterday after the game, conscious of the fact that it still might cause some headlines, that his wrist was still taped up coming into this season. He also notes that he went eight months between games due to injury and that it took longer than he wanted to find his game this season. Now that last part, I want to highlight that last part here first, because when Pedersen went off on his really slow start to kick off the year, I was one of the people going out there and saying, okay, look, I get it, like, he's $7 million worth, he is supposed to be the best player on the team, like, I get it, Quinn Hughes is probably one of the best players, Miller's one of the best players, Demko's one of the best players, but based off of the reputation, Pedersen is supposed to be one of the best players, too. And I was kind of like, yeah, he was out from the team in early 2021 because he got injured, he missed out on the entire bug that infected the team with the virus. He wasn't on the team when that happened, and he didn't 
play for the majority of the 21 season. So the fact is, he went out there, missed all that time. In the offseason, he's still recovering. He's not playing any hockey because you can't play hockey in the summer, especially when you're under contract with an NHL team. Actually, no, never mind. He wasn't under contract with an NHL team and he didn't sign until like during the preseason or whatever it was. So Pedersen got injured early 2021. He takes the entire rest of the season off in recovery. He likely takes the off season off in recovery too. He misses out on the training camps and then he doesn't play for a good chunk of the preseason. This guy had not played in like eight months. And that was a point that I very much adamantly went out there and preached in my videos. You can go out there and see the game reactions and everything, calling out Pedersen when he wasn't doing well and saying, yeah, I mean, it's been a long time. No, I'm not making excuses for the guy. I'm not going to try to make it seem like his poor play is acceptable. But reasons are just that. They're reasons. Reasons are not justifications. You know, you can kill somebody just because they murdered your best friend. Does that mean it's right? No, but you can understand why they did it. There's a difference between reasons and justifications. So, Pedersen, I wasn't justifying his poor play at the beginning of the year, but I was always kind of saying, yeah, it's understandable, for sure. But now, hey, he's back. His wrist is no longer taped anymore, which was one of the big reasons that a lot of people were speculating that, you know, his shooting percentage was going way down. You can't be shooting at 5, 6, 7% and have your name be Elias Pedersen because a lot of people will go out there and look at that and say, what? ep 40s only shooting at that amount of percent? How many goals does this guy have? Take a look at the total numbers right here. Elias Pedersen has 16 points in his last 15 games since January 16th. Now, this tweet was actually made in the middle of the game, so he actually got another assist later on in the night. He's got what? 10 points in his last six games or whatever it is. Like, Elias Pedersen has been fantastic the past few games. And Rob Williams goes out there and says, yeah, most of these points are at even strength, which is by far the most on the team in that time. Then you also have Jeff Patterson going out here talking about over the past 15 games, EP40 is hanging out with guys like Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl in terms of overall point production. And now, when I watch Elias Pedersen play the game of hockey, I don't see the same guy that keeps on falling down left, right, and center. I don't see the same guy that keeps on missing the net. I don't see the Pedersen we saw under green. It's almost like the entire video we made about Cole Caulfield and Martin St. Louis earlier today can be cut, pasted, and repeated for this Elias Pedersen thing. I don't know if it's strictly Boudreaux that is the reason why Pedersen has exploded offensively as of late, but I guess it definitely would be some part of the equation. You also have to take a look at the confidence Pedersen is playing with. He is a lot more just certain in what it is that he wants to do, going out there dangling guys and playing along the boards, slithering out of situations like he used to as a rookie, and making some really ambitious plays. Really nice passes, really good long-range setups on the power play when the team is not able to break in. Like, the guy's hockey IQ is fully on display, and it has been over the past few games now that this season is all of a sudden feeling a lot more salvageable than it felt early on. For Pedersen, at least. Not for the Canucks. I mean, the Canucks won yesterday. Great. But I personally still don't think they're good enough to make the playoffs. But for Petey, by himself, just taking a look at it, I mean, 12 points in his last 10 games, 8 points in his last 5, and he's got 34 in 52 games played on pace for 54 points. Now, again, his point production this season, a little bit of a decline from the previous seasons, but all the crap that happened to this guy at the beginning of the year, I think it's good enough of a reason to understand why that decline was there. But either way... If Pedersen goes out there and plays the rest of his 7 million AAV contract for the next two seasons after this one, in a more progressive way, he goes out there and improves even more than what he has done so far, then yeah, I think it's going to be a lot more worth it than we initially thought when he was suiting up in those initial games in October and November and December, not getting any points, not getting any shots on goal, and just losing games left, right, and center because the Vancouver Canucks were terrible under Travis Green. So talk to me in the comments what do you think about Ilias Pedersen and how he has found his game back. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.